Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're in the first week of May and we have all these dandelions that have popped up around us. And we also have a lot of weeds that have popped up too. So if you're interested in seeing a tool from Milwaukee to take care of this, I think you're gonna wanna check this video out. It's story of Tuesday. Roll the intro. Welcome back friends. Last winter I reviewed this saw right here. This is a Milwaukee M18 Fuel 9 inch cutoff saw. So when you're using the saw right here, you want to keep the dust down, number one, for your own safety, your own health, and number two, to be OSHA compliant. So I briefly showed you this switch tank series right here by Milwaukee. This is the water supply tank. So I'll put a link to this video down below in case you want to see how this one works. But today we're going to focus on the Milwaukee sprayer switch tank. Let's get started. So now I'm gonna show you the quick and easy steps so you can hit the ground running. So you first are out with the M18 switch tank powered base. The next thing you do is grab your charged battery. So I believe I'm using a three amp hour battery here. The kit itself comes with a five amp hour battery. I'm just using the one that I had handy. Installed it in there. And now you grab your four gallon switch tank sprayer assembly and you install that on the base. And now on the very front, we have a latch. We're gonna attach that, push it down, and then turn it around. And there's the same thing on the back right here. That just secures it to the base. And now we're gonna unscrew the lid on the top, fill it with water. For this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it brief and only fill it with two and a half gallons. And now I'm adding a Weed Be Gone type product into the measuring cup that's built into the lid. It just stays on there. Look how easy that is. You never have to look for a measuring cup. It's awesome. The next thing we do is give it a little shake so we know it's mixed together thoroughly. So we're gonna move the pressure setting to number five so we get full power. Turn the switch on and see that green light right there? Then the next thing you do is put the sprayer on your back and get the shoulder straps on, get your waist straps on. I like to have it on a tailgate or on a table like this when I go to put it on. It just makes it a little bit easier. And there's also a chest strap too. So that's it. It's time to take action. Let's go find some weeds to spray. There's a few different nozzles you can use. I think my favorite, the one I find the most effective is what I'm using here. It's the angled fan nozzle. You can just see how fast it is getting this whole area wet right here. So it's gonna take care of all those weeds. I mean, just look how fast this is. I have never used a backpack sprayer in my life that's this effective right here. You can just really get your work done in no time. The fan nozzle is just amazing. So here's one other look at it. The sun is behind me right here, so it might give you a a little better idea of how the spray pattern works. You just see it's really covering the ground fast. And then here in my landscaping area, I turn the pressure down because I don't want to spray everything. So it's down from five to number two. You can just hear how gentle that sprays. It works really well if you don't want much overspray. So this setup right here is the first of its kind. So if you're interested in a chemical sprayer, like for concrete spray, I believe it's a gray color tank. And that's the third one that we'll switch out to here. I don't have that particular one. Then I just want to show you on the bottom of all the tanks right here, I just have clean water. I'll show you, I'll just open that up a minute. So if you want to drain it, you can do that. <laughs> just gonna plug that back up again. So then I just want to mention each tank has its own built-in pump. The pump's not there, it's actually inside the tank. I'll show you in a second. So I'm not sure if you can see inside the tank there, but there is a pump underneath all that plastic right there. So if you've ever been in an RV and you turn the water on, this is a very similar sound to it. It's the same style, like an on-demand type pump. So if you're not running any water, it's not pumping. So one of the first things I noticed about this backpack spare, it has really nice shoulder pads right here and then around your waist. I'll just show you the other sprayer that I used to use before this. I'll show you a quick little comparison how small each strap is on your shoulder and around your waist. 
This is like three times the size, a lot more comfortable. So you can also put this across your chest. So in case these are rolling off your shoulder, you can put those on too. All right, so right now we're on setting number five. I just switched it on. So I just wanna mention there's a couple things. There is a lock right there. So if you squeeze that, you push that in. If you wanna have it continuously on without having to hold it the whole time, you can do that. And right here is a lockout. So if you wanna flip that forward and prevent anybody from squeezing that, let's say you have some type of weed killer in there, you don't want anybody to get sprayed on accident. That's a nice little safety switch right there. All right, so we're gonna take that off. So this is setting number five. That's kind of a mist. Let's open it up a little bit. That's a spray. See, that's pretty powerful. It's 125 PSI. Here's number four. Three, two, and one. This has a really nice, long, skinny nozzle, stainless steel, so if you want to get in between some plants down on the ground and quick spray a little something without splattering the other plants with weed killer, this is gonna work really well for that. So yesterday I was moving these flags right here for my dog's invisible fence, and I just had a pair of slides on, and I walked by here and I actually got pricked by this right here, so I said I'm gonna come back with some weed killer and just try to take this area out right here. So if I have the pump on setting number one, I can just douse this area a little bit right here to kill this weed. And then the, hopefully the lawn will take over again. So watch this, ready? See how I'm just lightly dousing that area right there? I may have even gone too much, but I just want to hit that center really good. So I can actually just push it right in there. Just push it a few times. Here's some more. See, I can just get a little bit of water on that. That may have been too much. So there's just a few of these around, not that many. So I think it's just gonna be easier to hit it with some weed killer. So if you have an engineered drain field, you might have something like this in your yard. So I prefer just to put weed killer around something like this instead of running a line trimmer and then risk any damage around there. So on the battery charge, I probably run about four gallons through it. I just checked it, it has a full charge. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to fill this up to two gallons, and then I'm gonna time it to see how fast it can dump two gallons out. Then I've also had seen some concerns that it's not getting the last half gallon out. So we'll see how much of this is left after it's done spraying. All right, so I'm gonna fill it right to there. See if I can dump this in there neatly. All right, there, we're right at two gallons. And then it appeared to me that the fan tip actually put out more water. So we're gonna put this on, and we're gonna put the cap on and see how long this takes on full power to dump out two gallons of water. Okay, I have the fan tip on, stopwatch ready, set, go. So at 3.49, it's just putting out a little bit right now. I think that's about all we're gonna get right there. Okay, so that's 4.20 right there, just completely dumping until every last drop came out. So now the moment of truth, we're gonna see how much is left inside here. All right, so this is a quart. I don't think we have more than a quart in there, so we'll just see how much water is left in here. You ready? That's the majority of it. There's a little splash in there, but not much. So it looks like we have about seven ounces of water left in there. I noticed I was able to 
get virtually all the water out when I tilted it this direction right here. They do recommend when you're done each time to thoroughly rinse it out and not leave stored chemicals in there. It does have Viton seals on it, so that's more resistant to chemical wear. But it's probably still a good idea to get the most life out of that by doing a rinse. So here's a test I want to do. I just filled this with water. I'm just going to completely dry it off just in case there's anything on it. And I have actually a little over four gallons of water, so it's right there. So I'm going to move this around and see if any splashes out from the lid. There have been times with an old backpack sprayer that I had that when I had it really full and I was walking around that actually went out the top and I could feel some going down my back and get my shirt wet, which is a really bad thing if you're using weed killer. So let's see how this holds up. Feels like it's all dry. I'm gonna shake it around. Let's go back and forth a little bit. Go this direction. Kind of go all the different directions. Okay, looks like a good seal. And if I look on here, there is definitely a nice rubber seal all the way around. And then there's a little rubber stopper on the very top right there that looks like it allows some airflow, but it keeps anything from flowing through, which is great. All right, so it passes that test. So one thing I noticed when I fill this up, this thing is very heavy. So I'm not sure how much this might weigh, but it's a good thing we have these heavy duty shoulder straps. So I think for me personally, I'd rather go like three gallons and less and fill it up more frequently than to go four gallons and then have all that weight but if you're quickly dumping that out, you know that this is going to get rid of a couple gallons pretty fast. So I'd say when this has four gallons of it, the weight is pretty extreme. It does feel like it goes straight down and it's not like putting pressure on any part of your back, but you definitely feel a lot of weight on there. So I feel after running this for like three or four minutes, then it definitely becomes a lot more comfortable in comparison to a full tank. All right, so let's check out some of the specs on this. So I'm bringing the box out right now so I can make sure I'm not leaving any details out for you guys. So the model number of the tank itself is 49-16-28 PS, and it has a one year warranty. So as I mentioned, it shows it's an add-on and replace tank assembly, which eliminates cross chemical contamination and delivers low cost of ownership. So it has a four gallon capacity, stainless steel wand, transport handle, wide mouth opening and strainer, throttle lock on, Viton seals which delivers increased durability against harsh chemicals, dual diaphragm pump for longer pump life, volume indication marks for accurate pouring. And this is all powered by the Switch Tank M18 powered base not included. So as I mentioned there's three options, the spray tank like we have here, the switch tank four gallon concrete sprayer tank assembly which I do not have and then the blue cap one which I do have that is the water supply tank assembly. Okay now looking at the specs the tank capacity four gallons PSI range anywhere from 20 to 120 flow rate range is 0.10 to 0.51 gallons a minute dry weight 7.65 pounds of this itself. A few different ways this can be purchased. You can get the tank only in all three versions. You can also buy this as a complete kit, which includes the sprayer tank, the base, and then it has the fan tip, and you know this is a standard tip right here, the brass one, and then the angled part. And it would also come with this Milwaukee M18 Red Lithium XC 3.0 battery. So what's amazing is you can spray up to 12 full tanks on a single charge. I had never sprayed 12 full tanks in a single day, but just knowing you can, it's amazing. But 12 full tanks on a single charge might come in more handy for a water supply tank like this. So if you're cutting concrete, you tend to go through water a little bit faster. My goal of this video is to help you guys out by putting this sprayer right here to the test so you can see if it's right for you in case you're considering the purchase of it. Hopefully I've answered all your questions. If not, put a comment down below. And if you enjoy this video review, you find it interesting, helpful, and informative, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.